Hello, my beautiful AP computer science students. Welcome to our last lesson in Unit 10. This lesson is the Merge Sort algorithm. And as you've probably surmised, it is in this lesson because the Merge Sort Algor merge sort algorithm is a recursive algorithm. So we've gone over two other sorts so far. We've gone over the selection sort and the insertion sort. And we've coded both of those back in unit six, I believe. Um, and they were easy to code, understand, um, but we did mention how both of them are actually pretty slow when you're working with large data sets. And I told you don't worry, we have a faster one coming up later in a later unit. Well, we have reached that later unit, and here is the faster one. <laughs> the merge sort is written recursively, and it is trickier to code, I will warn you, um, but it has the advantage of being very fast on large data sets. And what I want you to understand from the merge sort is just the process of it. So we're going to go through an example just understanding how it works and the algorithmic thinking of the merge sort. We will not be coding it. Um, again, it's kind of tricky to code. Um, and you will not have to know the speci code specifics for the AP exam. What you'll have to know is the algorithmic process of the merge sort. So that's really what I want to focus this lesson on. And it's really two processes um, that the merge sort can be split it into. The first is a divide, um, where uh, a recursive algorithm splits un an unsorted list, and we're going to use an array in our example, but it's going to split an unsorted array into sublists. And I say n sublists because however many elements there are in the starting array, that's how many individual arrays they'll be at the end of this divide process. And each of those arrays will contain only one element. After you divide that array into single elements, then it's the conquer piece. And this is another recursive algorithm, so two different types of recursive algorithms. The second recursive algorithm merges those sublists back together to produce a new sorted list. Okay. Um, and again, we're going to go through an example here to help you understand this. So there's two steps, divide and then conquer. I'm going to use this example, an array of eight numbers. So here are my eight numbers in an array. You can see that it's unsorted. We want to sort. So the first step is to divide. Okay. So divide splits this array down into its one element array values. Now the way this recursive algorithm works is it takes a complete array like we have here and it divides it in half. Okay, so there's eight elements here. It's pretty easy to divide in half, um, but you're gonna divide it in half. If you had an odd number of elements, it would just do kind of like similar to the binary search, how it just, the lower boundary becomes four and then this would be, um, this would be five. Like if you had nine numbers, we would have four and five. So you would just have an uneven amount, but it would do its best to split down the middle. After it splits down the middle, in, it'll split these into two separate arrays. And then it'll split that in half so that you have four separate arrays. And then each, it'll, the algorithm will go through and split each of those in half again until it reaches single element erase, arrays, erase. No, it's not erase, it's array, array. Wow, I've been, I've been doing this for too long at, uh, to mess this up, but uh, an array. <laughs> um, but this is what it looks like. There's no sorting going on during the divide portion. It just splits the array down into those sub arrays. So you can see here each number is its own array. And the recursive piece just keeps doing that until every element, even if you have a thousand numbers in your array, it'll split it into a thousand um, individual arrays. Okay. Now it's going to merge the pairs of sublists back in a sorted manner. So now what it's going to do is it's going to take two arrays, I say like side by side, you know, in um, in a visual sense, and it's going to merge those two arrays back together. And the way it merges the arrays, um, obviously, you know, you ha 
create a new array um, that is that can contain both elements, but it'll do it and it'll make sure that they are sorted together. So like 56 and 34, to merge those together, 34 would go first and then 56. Then it would merge the 55 and 12, and it would merge as much, ooh, did I leave a number out here? Oh, I think I left 37 out when I was supposed to be right in here. 37 should have been here because I have an even number. Um, but you, they merge them together. So, okay, I left it in here. That's nice of me. So 37 is right here. So it emerges 56 and 34. It'll merge 55 and 12. Um, 37 and 88 get merged together. And then finally 45 and 21. And each time it comes together, it will uh, make sure that they are in order, okay? And it continues this until only one sorted sublist is left. So right now we have four sublists, so we need to do some more merging. So the next merge happens with these two. And when they're merged together, that's when the sorting happens. So between 34, 56, 12, and 55, 12 is the lowest, so it's gonna go first, followed by 34, and then 55 and then 56. So you create a new array of four elements and everything is sorted in that array. Okay? And then it's the same thing with the other sublist. Okay. And then until finally, it merges it back into one completed sublist. Okay. And that's your merge sort algorithm. Now, I do want to say that depending on the type of algorithm you are working with um, in the merge sort, because there's several ways to write an algorithm, right? So the merge sort, um, the way the merge sort algorithm works is the order that the lists are divided and then combined does tend to vary, okay? So let's say I, like the first step one would be to divide this list in half. And then some algorithms... Um, like the one I'm thinking of, will only focus on this first half list and it'll divide this, then it'll fo focus on this half, and then it'll divide this. Okay, so the order that it divides it down, and then same thing, the order that it combines it back together will vary between the algorithm, algorithms that you use. Okay, but this divide and conquer is just kind of the overview of how the merge sort works. And that's really what we want you to come away understanding um, from this lesson. Okay, is it's a divide into subarrays and then conquer by condensing them back down in a sorted manner. Okay. Some other points, some things you got to know for the AP exam. Um, the code is is intense. You can look it up, okay? It's it's out there. There's a bunch of different um, ways to code it, but we're not going to cover that code here. Um, usually, uh, the merge sort, it is coded recursively, but it involves multiple recursive calls and multiple recursive methods that it's just not something, because it's so readily available, it's not something we have to necessarily know how to code recursively from scratch. Just like this whole unit, right? You don't have to know how to code recursion from scratch for the AP exam. So you're not gonna be asked to do it on the AP exam. You just have to know how it works for those multiple choice questions that asks, um, Th where it asks about sorting, okay? And specifically, um, how it at, it'll ask about sorting, sorting with the merge sort, insertion, and selection sort. So we'll see examples of that in the homework um, of what those questions might look like. I do want to note that this sort is also implemented on array lists. Um, you just use array list instead of an array, um, but you can use them on both. And here's kind of the big picture of um, the sorting advantages and disadvantages. The merge sort is very fast for large data sets, and it usually is preferred when we have those large data sets over insertion and selection. Um, it has a predictable performance time, which the other ones kind of do too, but this merge sort guarantees um, a complexity of n times log n. So remember that's n times log n, where, um, ooh, wow, I didn't spell that correctly at all. Um, n times log n, <laughs> where n is the number of elements in your list, okay? Um, and 
you don't have to know big O notation for the AP exam. That's a little bit misleading, but that's how we use it to compare um, uh, sorting algorithms, right? So that is the performance time for the merge sort. Um, for the, what was it, insertion sort, the best was an N and the worst was an N2 for the insertion sort. And for a selection sort, it's actually just N2 for worst, average, and best cases. Um, but either way, this has a higher performance time than our N squared. Okay, so the merge sort is very fast for large data sets. Now, that's not to say we should always use the merge sort. Okay, like why would we have selection and insertion if we could, if the merge sort is just better for everything, right? For most data sets. There's other considerations to deciding which algorithm would work the best in which scenario. Yes, merge sort is very fast for large data sets and we tend to use it the most for large data sets, but there's considerations like hardware and, um, just other things that can contribute to uh, deciding which algorithm to use. So we do like merge sort for very, for very large data sets, um, but know that there's other things that play a part, not just the time complexity for it. The disadvantage is it is difficult to code from scratch. Um, again, it requires multiple recursive methods usually and multiple recursive calls. And sometimes tracing through that can just, it can jumble the even the best brain. So that's why I'm not showing it to you now. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and it can be slower um, for small data sets because it does take up a lot of memory because of the multiple recursive calls. So it is slower for smaller data sets. Um, but very fast for those large data sets, okay? And that's kind of all you have to know when it comes to the merge sort on the AP exam. Again, I don't want to scare you with this um, big O notation, but we've kind of been talking about it the last couple units, so I just wanted to bring it up again. You don't have to know big O for the AP exam, um, but it is a way we compare these sorting algorithms to decide which one is the best one. Um, there's so many sorting algorithms out there. Um, the insertion, selection, and merge, those are the only three that are on the AP exam, but I definitely encourage you, if you're interested in these, to look up some more, um, more algorithms. And um, there's quite a few uh, creators out there who do a really good job of visualizing all of these different algorithms. So I would suggest looking up some other YouTube videos on those because I really like looking at the visuals of all the sorting algorithms. They're pretty neat. Um, but that's all you need to know for the merge sort. Um, it, it is a great recursive way to sort, um, sort an array. So that brings us to the end of lesson five. And at the end of lesson five, this is also the end of lesson, or of unit 10, not lesson 10, the end of unit 10. And it's been so great having you guys all follow along so far. So I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time.